Hey there everyone, it's Sangot, aka Zero. Welcome back to uh, Dream Daddy. We have four characters left, and the one that we're going to be going after this time is going to be Craig. So, I hope you guys will help me with this, because I don't really know Craig's too much. I played a little bit of it on the computer, so I don't really know how long it's going to be. So, this will be fun. Uh, let's start this up. Okay, I wonder what Craig's up to today. And now we get to, to Craig's dead book page and type out a message. Hey bro, or should I say neighbor, let's catch up like old times. A couple of moments passed before I hear a ding on the computer. It's a message from Craig. That was quick. Bro, my man, let's definitely be, let's definitely hang soon. Might be a little different from our old, from our old weekends, weekend long benders, but it'll still be fun. I think for a moment, this could be a fun opportunity to see my old buddy in his new element. We exchange a couple more messages and he logs off to prep for the game. I should see if Manda wants to join me. I walk over to Manda's room and knock on the door. Yo, Manda Panda. Huh. I open the door and find Amanda sitting cross-legged on the floor, surrounded by magazines and newspaper clippings. She seems to be making some sort of art piece, but... Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she's been crying. Hey, are you alright? Oh, yeah. Okay. I just was sad because I realized that dogs are too often killed off in movies to look to emotional reactions from the audience instead of being given the respect that they deserve. It's not right. Every time a dog, a dog is introduced into in a movie, I get nervous because nine out of ten that dog is gonna die by the end. I can watch a movie when people die and be unfazed, but the moment a dog dies, I'm out. Gosh, sad dog death movies take up the whole genre. There are too many. Uh, you know you can talk to me about anything, right? Huh. Yeah, that's why I'm talking about sad dog stuff with you. Okay, just. Remember that it's okay to be sad, and also remember that I love you very much, and only want the best for you. That's all. Hey. All right, all right. Jeez, don't let me cry again. What you working oh. on? Just a closer glass. We're supposed to make a piece that represents our goals for the future. I take a look. I take a closer look at our college. Our collage. That's a lot of dogs. Hey. It's mostly dogs. Yeah. Did you need something? Craig invited us to a softball game. Oh. Wanna go? Remember that one time you signed me up for that softball and you brought me. You built me all the gear, and then you took me to the first game, and then someone hit a ball toward you, toward me, and I just ran off, ran off the field crying. And then you hit in the dugout and would and would scream if I tried to pick you up. Yes, mm. I was afraid of baseballs. I thought they were. I thought, I thought you were a gigantic, sentient softball. So does that mean you don't want to go? Amanda gets up and looks at me, looks me dead in the eyes. Ugh. Determined. I'm finally ready to face my fears head on. Let's do this. Man and I make the short drive out to the so local softball field for a kids' softball game. It's pretty packed. We clamber up the bleachers and take out, take our seats on the top row. I don't see Craig anywhere. Aww. So when did the kids start crying and running off the field? You know that's re that your relationship with softballs is different from everyone else's relationship with softball, right? Okay, but if I don't see some kids cry, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed. Mm. For a the purpose, of course. Not because I take joy out of children's fighting for my amusement. Okay. Definitely not that. 
The game starts and the kid the game starts and the kids run out run out on the field. I see Craig by the dugout with the clipboard. He has rivers strapped to his chest, as per usual. There's a guy there's a guy in a pa uh, pancake costume doing jumping jacks across the field. I guess that's the mascot. Reading the kids' brightly colored jerseys, I see that it's the Maple Bay flip flapjacks against the pine oak the pine wood ocelots. Go flapjacks? Oh. Check up on the bat, Miranda. <laughs> yeah, Miranda, square up. How much do you know about softball? Enough to know that the bases are relatively hard, despite their name. Mm. But yelling is fun. Give it a shot. It's sarcastic. It's. It's. Uh, Catherine. Uh, let's see. Keep your eye on the ball. What's more important that you're having fun? What are you willing to sacrifice to win? Uh, keep your eye on the ball. And also an eye on the bat. <laughs> and the outfield and the other players. Just keep your eye on all the stuff that's stuff simultaneously. Nice. We watch a couple innings of softball that that aren't ready for major league yet, but Craig's training his team pretty well. It seems like he's really good with kids. Keg stand Keg stand Craig is good with ki with children. Ooh. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how hard they're hitting the ball and how no one has run off the field crying yet. Amanda, dear, you have to let it go. Huh? Let let go. I'm perfectly fine. The opposing team is up to bat. They hit a fly ball out into the center field. The, little, the tiny little girls, the tiny little girl tries to get under the ball, but it misses her glove and hits her straight in the forehead. See, it's complete. It's a complete justifiable fear. The girl plops down on the grass and starts crying. Craig makes a beeline to her, checking her forehead and comforting her until her parents arrive. He carries her off the field as soon as she sobs. Man, it's strange to think about how this was the guy who once backflipped off a roof into a pool while shotgunning a while shotgunning a beer. So he uh, he's so responsible now. The game resumes after the girl calms down a bit, and we watch a couple more innings. Craig's team is crushing the other team in the ninth inning. The Ocelots seem to be have given up by this point. I see one outfielder eating fistfuls of grass. A batter on a batter on the other team knocks a foul ball into the stands. I follow the trajectory and oh no it's going right for me oh no 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 I close my eyes and brace for impact I open my eyes and look over to see Amanda holding the softball staring at it in amazement hey. I caught the ball you saved yeah. me I caught the ball dad I caught the ball you didn't Amanda I faced my I faced my fears I defeated I defeated the softball I could do anything Amanda and I share a big hug it's a tender moment that I don't think anyone else watching really understood. I'm proud of you, kiddo. The game ends and Craig's team are declared the victors. We sit patiently as the girls line up to shake hands. Great job, everyone. We walk over to the dugout and congratulate Craig, who's talking with some of the parents. Craig, great work, man. Oh. Thanks. We've been working hard all season, and it's great to see it paying off. I'm so proud of all the gr of all my girls. Speaking of which, have you met Brer and Hazel? Hello. Hey, killer. Hey, killer. Play out there. Mm -hmm. Play out there. Yeah, you guys are rule. Thank you. You guys are twins, huh? So which one of you is the evil one? Hazel. Yeah, it's me. Eh? Good looking out. Eh? Do you guys ever pretend to be, uh, pretend to be each other? I don't have a twin, but I think I, I, but uh, I think if I did, I'd be doing that constantly. Yeah, I take all of our math tests. And I usually throw rocks at stuff when people get mad. I tell them I'm Blair. What? Hmm. We will talk about this later. Oh. Zero, I just got a couple more things to clean out, then we can hang. Sounds good. Just then, one of the moms jumps into the conversation. Not so fast. We had to celebrate our win, Craig. I'm taking the whole team to get pizza. Hi. Uh, oh, I don't know if I can... Nonsense, the girls won. What sort of celebration could we have without... Our fearless leader. She lays her hand on on his shoulder and gives him a, gives him goo goo eyes. Man, this mom is laying it on thick. Amanda and I share a look. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. It is it cool if my bro comes along? The mom looks slightly put off by, but covers up with a smile. Of course. Mm -hmm. Where are we going? Thirsty Thirsty's Pizza. Yeah. What? What? It's a real place.
An endless stream of girls clad in, in softball gear piled out of a minivan into a local pizza buffet, which is actually called Thirsty's Pizza. I met my trail behind them with Craig. It reminds me of all the awful pizza we put into our bodies back in the day. Remember how we used to just fold fold whole pies in half and then just taco fill and put taco filling inside them? Inside? Uh, pizzacos. I can never forget. How did we save off college? Oh. Our bodies were younger back then. More elastic, more able to handle the toxic waste we put in, we put inside of us. The good old days. The kid, the kids run around playing arcade games and eating greasy food. Men and I jump, and I jump on a couple slices of. Oh. Uh, hey, give me it. Me th no, absolutely not. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. I'm strictly eating salad here. Thanks for addressing the issue, Amanda. Hmm. Dad. Mom walks up, walks up to us, talking to Craig as if we weren't even there. Craig, thank you so much for looking at, looking after our kids. My daughter tells me every day how much, how great you are. I'm happy to look after them. Definitely helps that I have kids of my own. It's been so hard since Danielle left. I'm, I'm glad to know that my children have a, have a strong male role model in their lives. I'm and I look at each other again. Craig gets it. Craig gets it from all angles, huh? Craig smiles sheepishly. Thank you so much, dude. Craig holds his fist for a fist bump from the mom in what I think is a maneuver to lighten the conversation. He looks super uncomfortable. I should throw him a bone here. Uh, let's see. We could... I think I'm gonna do the tag team with Amanda. I give Amanda another knowing look, and she gives me back with, with a nod. She understands. Amanda puts her head on, puts a hand on her stomach to look at me with puppy dog eyes. Uh, Dad, I don't feel so good. I think I ate too much pizza. Oh no, sweetie, you're not gonna projectile vomit everywhere, are you? Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna projectile vomit everywhere right now. But where projectile vomit and right now usually seems to get everyone to clear out. But Martha's not budging. <laughs> back it up, Martha. You're in a splash zone. I drank a lot of orange juice. This morning is feeling pretty ascetic. You'll be fine. And then it shoots me a worried look. This con is going sideways. I should have known that a mom of all people would know the fake puke scam. Uh, well, I guess it went away. I'm fine now. Nothing's wrong. She turns her back on, on me to look at to talk to Craig. I'm taking Hazel and Blair tonight for a sleepover. Yep, they're pretty excited about it. You'll keep them out of trouble, right? Oh, of course, but I could always use a help help watching after everyone tonight. If you're not doing anything. Wow, this lady's really going for the gold. Oh. It's actually be nice to have a night to myself forever, but thanks for the invite. Oh. Uh, Martha, you might want to grab your child. She's stuffing pizza into the coin slot. Martha angrily, angrily turns her attention toward her daughter. Tiffy, not another arcade machine. I swear, if I have to buy it... Martha storms off toward her kid. She seems nice. Oh. Yeah, the team's one big, weird family. Takes all sorts, right? Tiffany, don't eat the tokens. <laughs> Tiffany's a stellar hitter. Phew, I finally think I have time to talk to Craig now. Man, you're a busy guy, huh? Mm -hmm. Only only on days like today, I hope. Dad... Mm -hmm. Hey, girls. Dad, can you help us beat our record on DDR? We told uh, Ariana's dad that you could destroy him on the dance on the dance mat. Please help. Oh. Girls, you know I don't have my, have my jukes anymore. But Dad... Craig looks at me like a hurt puppy. I don't know. Sorry, dude. Duty calls. I promise we'll catch up in a bit. It's all good, buddy. Craig runs off with his daughters, and I'm left alone with mine. Man, I was really hoping to hang out with Craig more today, but it seems like he's getting dragged in every direction. It definitely wasn't like this in college. I feel like we might be third wheel here. There's a worse... There's a, wor there's a worse place than arcade to be left to your own devices. You're right. Want to drop some coins on Pimble? You know it. Amanda and I pull pull up to the machine that is pretty hot, 
and get to work. I'm a little rusty, but the pinball wizard within me will never die. I pull out a decent score and then challenge Amanda to top mine. And immediately she gets multi-ball. Looks like she takes after her father. You're pretty good. Don't patronize me. Hey, just trying to pay a compliment. Amanda shushes me. She's, in her, she's in her zen mode. She fights valiantly, racking up points by the millions. She's this close to beating my score, but I feel honored just by being able to watch. You're, f you're friends with Craig, right? Janet from earlier walks up and leans on the pinball machine. Uh, yeah, we want we went to college together. Please don't lean on my thing. Uh, that's so interesting. So, do you know if he's, like, available? Oh, well, I honestly don't know if I could say... Seriously, you're gonna make it tilt. Because it's just... It seems like so much work to watch after kids is, after his kids. I just think it would be great if he... Mm. Lady, I swear to God. All of a sudden, a buzzer sounds, and the game is over. Janet made the pinball machine tilt. Ah. You stone harpy. What? Aww. I said I have to go over the... I said I have to go over there now and put pizza in my mouth so I don't say anything that'll hurt your feelings. Amanda? Oh. Bro. What's going mm -hmm. on? Now's our chance. If we don't get out of here now, we're stuck for the rest of the night. I'll wrangle Amanda and say some goodbyes with Craig. We head out of the pizza place, finally. Amanda promises that she'll keep the couch warm for me and heads home. Mm. Hope you don't mind me bringing you back here, bro. Not at all, dude. It's good to finally get you all to myself for a second. River burps. Well, almost all myself. <laughs> Hold up. Craig, Craig walks over to the to the trunk of his car and pulls out two gloves and a softball. Sorry, one second. Oh. Sorry. Uh, for some catch, this might be less catch and more you throw the ball at me running after it, but sure. We sit in the middle of the empty baseball diamond and start tossing the ball back and forth. I have a cooler in my car that we should, that we could grab, but there's only juice boxes in there. Man, fatherhood is strange. Oh. You're telling me I can't believe I'm looking back on my keg stand Craig days and reminiscing about it. Well, there's some good times, but I don't know anyone else who could pull off the rare horizontal keg stand. Oh. It was a feat of discipline, bro. Trust me. I haven't probably hung out with Craig with Craig in so long I don't even know where to begin. Let's see, I could ask about soft coaching softball, about his business, about the kids. Let's just talk about the kids, I guess. I can't believe your father of three. Hmm. Neither can I. You know me. I'm an, indec I'm an indecisive person. You switched your majors four times. Oh. Yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. But raising kids, when Bear and Hazel were born, it's finally made sense. It was like all the time I had spent trying to figure out things led to them. I couldn't be happier about it. I don't think I'd ever... I've ever cared about anything as much as I care about them. I had the exact same feeling when Amanda was born. It was the best thing to ever happen to me. It could be the only thing that ever happened to me, and I would still be proud of it, proud of the life I lived. So, is softball coach the life you wanted, or was it the life that was thrust upon you? And I'll admit that I was hesitant at first. Burn Hazel had so much energy that we just wanted to get them into a sport, but no one was there to run the team. The more I did, the more I did it, the more I saw how much it meant to all the girls. I'm worried that there'd be a ride if I quit. I would also be afraid of a bunch of tiny children with metal bats. Huh. They're quick and they work as a team. I've trained them too well. They take you take uh, they take you down like a pack of velociraptors on a T-Rex. Exactly. So you ran a business now. Hey. Yep, we sell fitness gear, import and export mostly. But we're coming up with our own line of athleticism wear soon. And then, I mostly use my sweatpants for watching TV and not, you know, sweating. Sounds like you'd make a killing. Mm. If, you ever need if you ever need athletic gear, I've got your back. You can sponsor me. I'll rep, I'll rep your athleticism wear brand while I mow my lawn. Oh. That is a glamorous lifestyle we've created. We've catered to, oh. yes. It's nice out here. Quiet. Must be good to get away from the softball moms for a bit, huh? Oh. Christ, Janet. Yeah, that was a lot. Aren't they always like that? Mm. Actually, this wasn't nearly as bad. Yikes. Oh, no. I'm just so not interested. Well, where are you interested oh, in? No. Oh. Peace and quiet? Not sight. Hot silence. Bro. My ultimate sexual fantasy is leaping in on a Sunday. On a Saturday. But more seriously, I just can't get back into dating right now. 
I couldn't even if I wanted to. There's no time. And I feel so uncomfortable trying to introduce a stranger into my girls' lives. They've already been through so much. I can't put them through that. But I, I hear you. Hmm. So the moms can tell me all they want, but the girls are my top priority. Uh, the right person will come along eventually. Hit softballs, don't get hit. Hit softballs, don't get hit on by moms. Uh, the right person will come along eventually. You don't have to rush it, man. Things will fall into place for you, and someday we're, and someday you're gonna find someone who cares about your kids just as much as they as they care about you. Bro, that's so sweet. Well, I'm distracted. I missed the softball, and it hits me right in the head. Wow, that hurts. Amanda was right all along. Sorry, dude. Greg runs over to me. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Wait, let me do the dad thing for a second. Craig spends a moment examining my head. I... It's worse than I thought. Don't tell me you have to kiss it to make it better. I... You would be so lucky. Uh, that was the plan. I mean, kissing is for the weak. I feel like I've earned it at this point. Waiting all day to hang out with you. Well, Craig leans in and kisses my forehead. Walk it off, champ. Are the lights on the safe? Are the lights on the softball field really hot, or is it just me? Or is it just me? I get up and dust myself off. River yawns. Oh. Hey, little buddy, you must be getting tired. You must be getting tired, huh? Hmm. I hate to say it, but I should probably head out. Sorry, things are so. You get older, and life just kind of gets in the way, huh? We start walking off walk to the parking lot. Hey, remember that one house party we went to that got broken? That got broke up? That got broken up by a helicopter? Hey. How could I forget? You and me hopping over a concrete wall to get away. But the other side of the fence was a parking lot where a bunch of cops mm. were parked. Oh man, yeah. Could you imagine the look on, on our faces? We just walked straight past them like we were out for a stroll. And not knowing that we were at the party, they started joking with us about how big a, of a bust it, it was. We had to talk with them for 30 minutes. You told them we were interested in joining the academy. Hey. And then they started giving me a on points for the exam. Longest 30 minutes of my life. Man, college. Mm -hmm. Good old days, right? We get back to our cars, Craig pulls me into a hug, or at least as much as he could with a baby between us. Mm -hmm. Never enough time, huh? Guess not. Mm -hmm. Let me make it up to you. Let's sing soon. Yeah? I like that. I am as I walk through the door, spotting Amanda hunched over her collage glue stick in hand. Burning the midnight art oil. Figured I might be, I might do something in protective between episodes of Shark Hunter lip sync battle. Do the sharks lip sync or do the sharks hunt lip sync? Lip sync. <laughs> yes. I look over her shoulder at the collage. Amanda, this is some good. This is some good artwork. This is some good art. Look at this good art you have made. Huh. Thanks. I'm just about done. Like before, it's still a lot of dogs in one corner and a gigantic pile of. Of crash of cash, and the other it's Amanda. Is that me? Mm. Yep. The whole thing is about my goals for the future, and those are basically just to sit on, just to sit on a gigantic pile of money with my twenty dogs, and also have a strong, mutual supportive relationship with my father into adulthood. Oh, now you've done it. Get ready to watch your dad cry. Here it comes. Uh. It's happening. Aw, dad. You did this with your good art. She pats me on the back. Mm -hmm. Hey, how was your hang with Greg? I wiped a tear from my eye. It was good. That that Craig guy sure is busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, that's apple life isn't for quarters. Also, I'm very proud of you for facing your fears today. How does it feel? I'm on top of the world, pops. I just start facing my fears more often. Oh yeah, how about tomorrow we hit some empty parking lots and practice, dare I say, parallel parking? Oh. Baby steps, Dad. I'll work on my way up to it. Alright, I'm gonna hit the hay. Take care of, of late night television for me, alright? I'll let them know you said hi. Let you said hey. Uh, I cannot really speak today. I feel like I don't know why, but I feel like Craig sounds sometimes he sounds like uh, uh Nate from Nate Wants to Battle 
It's kind of interesting. I didn't like really think about it till just now. Well, I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles. I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we get any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple, of, a couple of tries for them to get in. Hey, my coupons. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I let them knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda. She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay. Just thought you wanted this big old envelope with we got from HIA. Right. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Hurry, Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back later. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out, the, spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And? The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda, her fa face... Amanda's face is unreadable. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't... Yes. I got in. Oh. I got in. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big... Uh, gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. Huh. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god. I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and you and your photography is incredible. Oh. Wait, mm. Dad, I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. I think from what HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make mm. it work. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner at your choice, wherever you want. Wherever? I think I'm actually gonna fast forward through this because uh, we've seen this, we've seen this like a couple of times with some of the other ones. So I'm gonna kind of fast forward a bit. We've seen that go through like a couple of times. I think it was like in the earlier ones. Hey buddy, so I have a favor to ask. Okay, Robert invited me over for dinner. And I know it's kind of a faux pass to invite another bro, but... i known the guy for years and I still can't get a good read on him. And I know it's going to be super awkward if I go by myself. Will you please come with me? I love food. I especially love food that's free. And I don't know why you're so sweaty over cooking, but sure. You did him down. Thank you. I really hope that's a sweat of relief. That doesn't sound too bad. I could definitely go for free food, but why is Craig being so apprehensive? Does he know something about Robert that I don't? I hurry up, I hurry up, I hurry up and reply before my dad brain can work it itself into a paranoia spiral. Yeah, dude, I'm down. Thank you, and Craig and I decide to meet up before heading over to Robert's place. Craig's waiting on my porch, bottle of white wine in hand. Zero, boy, am I glad to see you. Likewise, man, classy of you to bring wine. Oh, it's not wine, it's sparkling apple cider. Robert literally has a wine cellar, so I think he's good. Wow. Or, uh, at least I think he has a wine cellar. I'm generally unsure if if he was telling the truth or not. I can never tell with him. Thank God it's not just me. Hmm. I never know. He's so deadpan about everything. I usually just laugh it off, but man, that guy's an enigma. We start walking over to Robert's house. Does Robert even know how to cook? I have serious doubts about whether he even knows how to shape properly, or iron his shirts. I feel like you learn to cook after you learn those two fit. You learn those two those two first. One time I saw him grab a hot dog from a trash can. Oh. I mean, it was at the very top of the trash can, like sitting above it, but still, if he were on trial, I think the jury would definitely would define that as in the trash. And this def in his defense, I've definitely considered grabbing food from the top of the trash before. Hmm. Well, yeah, I think we've all considered it, but considered it, but the difference is that Roberts actually did it. True. Maybe he's the enlightened one. Maybe we're, we're holding ourselves back. Nice. We arrive at Roberts' house and ring the doorbell, but the doorbell won't chime. Hmm, must be broken. Craig knocks on the door a few times. Since when does Robert have a dog? I don't know. That's weird. I can hear Robert just inside. One second. This is uncharted. This is uncharted uh, territory, Zero. What if he's the one making barking noises and there is no dog? Don't say that. We're not even inside yet. Oh. 
Finally, the door opens. Robert looks a little surprised to see me. Zero, didn't know you'd be tagging along. Huh. Did Craig not tell Robert I was coming? Come on, Craig. I can leave if there's not... No, it's fine. Come on in. We enter Robert's living room, which is surprisingly really nice. Super messy, but still nice. Mary's also at home. We can still hear barking from the other room. I didn't know you had a dog, Robert. Oh yeah, that's Betsy. I have to put her up when put up with when guests are over. She'll go, she'll calm down in a bit. Oh. What kind of dog is she? Pitbull. Rescued from a dog fighting ring a few years back. She hates strangers. If I let if I let her out right now, I probably would have to take you both to the ER. Craig and I make eye contact. He raises an eyebrow at me. Oh, okay. Nice. Anyways, we'll be ready in a minute. Hope you guys like Uso Boko. Os I don't know. Robert leaves the room, presumably to get the ki get to to go to the kitchen. Craig leans in and whispers, "Was the dog f was the dog fighting things? Was the dog fighting things real or was he kidding? I don't know. What's us? What's Oso Boku? I don't know. Did he make up that word? Until I have Oso Buko, Boko, I don't really know. In front of me, we can only assume so. We sit in silence for a second, taking in Robert's living room. Are we about?" Are we, uh, are we about to get sawed? Mm -hmm. Nah, usually you wake up in those situations. We voluntarily walked into his, in this one. Robert finally walks into the room, carrying three paper plates of steaming food like a waiter. I don't, have I don't have a dining table. Don't trust... I don't have a dining table. Don't trust them, so we're eating here. Hey. Also, I don't have real, peop real people plates. Oh, that's okay. Robert plate, uh, sets plates in front of us on the coffee, st on the coffee table. I still can't tell what it is. Looks like meat, maybe lots of sauce. I can make some sort. I can make out some some vegetables. I think this might be rice, but it could also be pasta. Guess there's only one way to find out. I take a bite. Oh my god! I take another bite. The medley of flavors in this dish is amazing. The meat is so tender, and the risotto. I think that's what it's called. It's so creamy. Robert, this is really incredible. You cook this? I fished out of the dumpster behind a restaurant, or at least I think it was a restaurant. Hey. Can you let the people just throw the stuff away? I almost hey. gag. I'm kidding. I look over at Craig, who looks weary but still has his mouth full. He gives Rob he gives Robert a thumbs up. I'm glad you like it. Where did you learn to cook like this? Oh. Worked at a restaurant in Spain for a hot sec. Is he messing with us? I decided to play along. You lived in Spain? Mm -hmm. After I dropped out of college, I went backpacking through Europe, crashing, crashing on, crashing on couches, sleeping in hostile in hostiles, wherever. Totally broke. Worked a couple odd jobs whenever I could scrap together some cash. Hey. One night, I'm, I'm eating dinner at this little restaurant just outside of Madari Adri. I go pay and realize I spent the last of my money on booze the night before. I'm in the middle of ditching when the manager catches me and puts me to work in the kitchen. Long story short, they end up liking me so much they offer me a job. Why not, right? Started, live, started living with some distant relatives on my, on my mom's hey. side. Over the course of two years, I worked my way from busboy to sous chef. Learned a lot. Quick and I wait for the punchline. What night watchman did he swindle to get back into the streets? Who did he call in a game of poker in the back in the back room of of a speakeasy for safe passages in the crew quarters for a of a cargo ship. Oh. Anyway, I still love to cook. I don't know what's real anymore, but this food's so good I kind of I kind of don't care. That's amazing. Mm. It really is. To be honest, I wasn't exactly I wasn't exactly expecting gourmet cooking here, especially not served on paper plates. Oh. I don't care about pleasantries. If the food's good, it should speak for itself. This also book is screaming for itself, and paper plates are just as good as regular plates if you if you double them up. Uh -huh. Hmm. Hey, is it bad if I ask for seconds? Mm. Help yourself, but save room for dessert. I made lemon lemon berry sarvine. Oh. Well, aren't you just full of? Craig looks over at me. Hey. Surprises. Robert winks. You bet I am. Ah. You come over for dinner anytime. Hey. Craig. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna go get seconds. Me too. After consuming, after consuming our way, our consuming way more than my body could handle, and then really ensuring a later food com coma with the generous serving of whatever Severn it was, Craig and I decided to head out. Oh. Thanks for coming. I'm 
making an attempt to be more social. Well, if we're always... well, if... eh. Uh, well, we're always happy to stop by if you want company. Especially if your Osoboku is involved. Welcome. You've got dads. All right. So date number two. I really want to get some good quality time with Craig. The last time we hung out, he was so busy with the kids and fending off flirty moms that I feel like we barely talked. Ever since the first time we hung out, I've been trying to get up a, trying to get up a little earlier for runs. I don't think I'm gonna be as embarrassing as last time. Maybe I'll even be able to catch up with him now. I'll type out a message on, to him on dad book. Hey man, training, training on my run game recently. Ready for round two? I respond almost immediately. Dude, of course. Emojis. I uh, don't know why he didn't just send an emoji rather than type it out. And then this pops, pops into my inbox from Craig. Let's meet up early tomorrow morning for my favorite morning activity. Brunch. I type back. Brunch? What's that? You run and then you get brunch. Oh, right. Greg and I agree to a time to meet in the morning, and I have a chance to spend the evening hanging out with Amanda. So, are we doing pizza tonight? Again, can't we do like, can't we do like a salad night? Hey. Dad, are you on a health kick? I, not yet. I have formed the commit. I have formed the committee to examine the possibilities of being on a health on a health kick. They haven't returned with the with their findings. Mm. Dad, if you do a health kick, then I have to go on a health kick by virtue by being under the same roof roof as you. I don't know if I have to if I have the constraint for that. The committee isn't back with the findings yet. This is a multi year assessment on several <laughs> levels. Well Mind if the phone start answers at me. I'm looking as she dials. Ah yes. Can I get an extra large pizza with chicken, bacon, extra cheese, and tomatoes, and a couple of the gar of the garlic sauce cups? Amanda, you're going like north here. Oh, right. Can you maybe throw some leaves on there or something? Yeah. He's going on a health kick. Yeah, Rico, I know. It's tragic. Amanda listens for a second. Mm. Hold on, I'll ask. Huh? Dad, is oregano a salad? Uh, I don't actually know. It's a spice, I know that. Uh, sure. Yeah, Rico, sprinkle some of that on there. Yep, cash is fine. Say hi to the wife and kids for me. <laughs> Men hangs up. Rico says hey. My food gets delivered and we plop down on the couch to eat some za. Uh. Just be careful running is a gateway drug. It's a slippery soap dad. First you go on a couple light jogs and before you know it you're converting the garage into a home gym and renewing your subscription to some sort of weekly kab kombuka delivery service. Question? Shoot. What's kombucha? Okay, so you aren't too far gone yet. I'm just giving you a, a hard time, Pops. I really ha I'm really happy you're running more and caring about your health. I want to keep you around for as long as I can. As long as possible. Thanks, kiddo. Speaking of which, I'm running with Craig tomorrow. Yeah. You gonna be able to keep up with him? Hey. Probably not. <laughs> we, laugh at, we, eat, we laugh and eat more pizza than is probably healthy, or healthy for in the name of carbo loading. I call it a night and I call it a night early so that I'm ready for tomorrow. When I first started running in the mornings, it was pro it was pretty hellish. Now that I'm a few sessions in, admittedly it admittedly has become a little bit easier. Despite it always ending in a dry heaving over a trash can. Is that what runners high as? Just dry heaving? I was at my tennis shoes, throw on a t-shirt from the winter's sum the winter the winter's summit I went to twenty years ago. And out of the door at a modest jog. Craig's already outside with River strapped to his chest. Wow. He's dressed head to toe in color coordinated running gear. Wow. I look like a total slub next to this guy. Hey bro. Morning Craig. River gonna be running with us? Oh. Best as she can. We're we're taking it to the limit, aren't we, kiddo? Yeah. 
Oh, uh, I know what that means. Craig Hanser stuff a toy which makes your smile ear to ear. Mm. That's Arnold the Capybara. Sometimes it's the only thing that makes that little gator to stop crying. Oh, I've been there. Amanda had a stuffed panda that she carried around everywhere. She would have a tantrum if we ever tried to wash it. It was gross. So you've been running lately? Every morning for 30 minutes. I'm basically an elite athlete at this point. <laughs> well, I'll try to keep up. And so where are we oh. headed? I was thinking that we could do a couple laps around the park. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Mm. Then we'll do some hill we'll do some hill climbs up a slope. Uh, okay, I can probably handle mm -hmm. that. And then we'll close it off by doing some wildness survival hike running to increase our agility. I'm suddenly struck by the overwhelming need to crawl back into bed. Oh. That's okay to you. I usually like to throw some timid mur some timed murder sprints in there, but I'll go easy on you since you're a beginner. That sounds like something I'm able to physically do? Dude. Great, let's get started. Oh. Craig and I finally arrived at the park. A few other lone joggers make their way around the perimeter and river waves enthusiastically at everyone who passes. It's a lot more peaceful in the mornings, aside from the birds chirping and river gurgling away in the stroller. It's pretty quiet. Alright, good warm up. That was the warm up? Hey. Let's start the show. Hey. But wait. Kirk reaches into his bag and tosses me a water bottle. I fumble it, but thankfully I don't drop it. Oh. You gotta hydrate, bro. I take a long drink from the water bottle and feel reinvigorated. Man, I don't drink enough water. Hey, I look down and pick up Arnold's river's toy and hand it back to her. I also dropped this. Thanks for looking up, bro. You ready? Hmm. Yeah. We finally finish our however many tenth lap around the park. I'm breathing I'm breathing heavily, but I can't believe I actually didn't lose Craig. He's even he's even breathing heavily too, which makes me feel a little better. I look down on my shirt and notice that I'm drenched in sweat. Uh huh. Almost look like a frowny face. That's one. What? Hey. I'm just kidding. Good us out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than the last time. I launched you off a treadmill. Yeah, man, you really pushed me to the, my limit just just now. I can't believe I held on. Sometimes you just need someone there for you, to push you to do your best, absolute best. I'm glad I could be that guy. <laughs> you ready for the hill climb? Hmm. There's my little cheerleader, Zero. You ready? I don't know if like either one of them is like a... I don't know if like it matters, I'm just gonna go with the first one. You bet. Craig takes me to the to separate portion of the park where there's a steep hill that seems to go off go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some j other joggers at the top. So what do we do now? We run up the thing. That looks like a lot. Zero, there's two things you need to know about this hill. One, don't stop running don't stop running until you get to the top. And two, Craig points to the top hey. of the hill. That's not the top. Let's do this. Oh. I finally reached the top of the hill after making my way past what I originally thought was the top of the hill. Once I hunch over onto my knees and gasp for air, my lungs are like da are like daggers poking my ribs. I can feel my heart in my ears. River, I'm having a moment, please. Ooh boy. Craig looks like he's taking a beating as well. Ha, so he is human. Nice. Zero, put your arms on your head and stretch at your elbows. It'll help you breathe better. I do as Craig say, says, it feels a little better, but I'm still in agony. And here. Craig tosses me the water bottle again. I hydrate like my life depended on it. Thanks, dude. Phenomenal work. You feel that light, that lightness in your heart, in your head? That's the runner's eye. Oh, that's it. I thought it was just, you know, dying. Want to take it slow for a bit? I would like that very much. As we're catching our breath, River starts crying. Oh. What's wrong, sweetie pea? What's wrong, sweet pea? Do you want to play with Arnold? Craig looks around, looks around us. Oh boy, man down, I think we lost Arnold. River keeps wailing. I've abandoned my child's toy. We gotta find him, dude. It should be simple, right? We just gotta retrace our steps. I remember River last having it down at the bottom of the hill. Craig and I jog down the path, searching high and low for the stuffed capybara, which Craig takes the time to explain to me is a large rodent native to South America. We get to the place where River might have dropped it, but it's still nowhere to be found. Looks like we got a mystery on our hand. We uh, we have to get to the bottom of this. I suspect foul play. Looks like it's a prime case for the world for the world renowned detective Frost. Oh. 
dude, it's time for a bro adventure. A bro adventure. Oh. We'll have five and decide to drive back to the parks to see if we can find any leads. Hmm. So it looks like there's a couple more places to check, but and some bros around here that we should that we can interrogate. Sounds good. Hey. Wait, who's good cop and who's bad cop? I think about it for a second. Well, I think that's with I think with your stature and, and overall resilience, you would make an intimidating bad cop. But on the other hand, you do have an adorable ba adorable baby strapped to your chest, so that softens the edge a bit. Oh. I love you. All valid points. I think you would make a great you would make a great cop, great good cop because of your congenial attitude and willingness to try new things. But then again, I've seen how you get when there's too many commercials breaks during a show. So you have the potential to be a be a scary bad cop. I don't have to watch meat to watch meat hell in three minute segments with five minutes of commercials in between, and they're loud. But com but commercials are too loud. I just want to watch my show in PC without people yelling at me to buy wiper fluid and stuff. Bro. Case in point. Let's play. It, let's play it moment by moment. Oh. Smart. Oh. So where to, protective? Uh, let's start with the playground. We're gonna work our way downward. We'll make our way over to a small playground at the edge of the park. A couple of kids play on the jungle gym while parents watch on the nearby benches. Over on one of the benches, I spot a familiar face. Uh, let's see. Look for clues. Interrogate Josh. Uh, interrogate Josh. Uh, Joseph. Try to calm River down and move to another part of the park. Um, let's see what Joseph's up to. We jog over to Joseph, who seems to be engrossed in his book. Joseph. Joseph nearly drops his book. Hi, hey guys. Didn't think I'd see you two out here. Zero, are you exercising? Sure, I'm, you know me. I just love to run and be healthy. That kind, that kind of my thing. Whole thing. What are you reading? Oh, just a book on knots and rope tying. For boats. Boat ropes. Sure, we'll say boat ropes. Or boat, you know. Air quotes to that. <laughs> right. Say, so, you didn't happen to see a stuffed capybara around here. What's a capybara? It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Joseph thinks for a second. Hmm, haven't seen one around. I'll tell the kids to keep an eye out. Your kids are here? Hey! Joseph looks around. They were here a second ago. Must have gone exploring around the park. Do you know where they could have run off to? Yeah. The kids. They get into mischief sometimes, but they always come back. Mischief, you say? Oh. I, uh... Wait, am I being interrogated right now? Just doing our due diligent, Joseph. I don't know. Arnold means a lot to River oh. here. I mean, you're more than welcome to ask Chris... Christian and Christy, I imagine they have their their ears to the ground on all the latest playground drama. They might have, they might be somewhere around the woods. Thanks, Joseph. We'll let you get back to your rope book, but rope boat ropes. We head back to the playground. Uh, let's try to calm try to calm River down. This is a pretty nice playground. Might as well get a couple of swings in. What about Arnold? Maybe having a little swing might calm River down. Might buy us some more time. You're right. She's about to go nuclear. This might prepare her for the poss the possibility of us not being able to find Arnold. Yeah, River looks like she's about to go nuclear. All right. Life is cruel and tough, but at least we'll always have the swings. Craig stra straps River into the baby swing and gives her a gentle push. She giggles. I think I see it on this on the swing next to her, and immediately realize that I'm stuck. River seems to love that. Craig eventually lifts me out of the swing, and we decide to go back to the to the investigation. Uh, let's move to another part of the park. Where to now, bro? Uh, let's see. There's the field and the woods. Let's go to the field. We wander out out to a grassy field at the center of the park. There's this, like a whole there isn't a whole lot to see, but there's a few figures camping out on a blanket, and the grass could hold any number of secrets. Uh, Matt and Carmarista look for clues, interrogate River. Um, let's interrogate River. Wait, let me try this. I've always, it's always the culprit you least expect. I get eye to eye with River, who so looks like she's on the verge of tears. Good cop. Hey, sweetie, believe me, nobody wants you. To, nobody wants. 
to find your copy bar more than me, but we need more clues, and I think somewhere in that baby brain of yours, you might have something that leads us to the perp. So what do you say, kiddo? Bleh. I turn to Greg. We're getting nowhere with the witness. Uh, let's move to another part. I've deduced where, where we should probably go. Let's go to the woods. See if we can find the evil children. We'll make our way to the outskirts of the park. There are a couple of benches, but uh, by the dense tree line. Looks like that Robert's looks like Robert's here all by himself. This also seems to be like the perfect place to look for clues. Joseph Swins must be around here somewhere. And let's interrogate Robert. Maybe Robert saw something. We walk over to Robert's bench. Hey, Rob. Don't call me that. Okay, hi, Robert. Don't call me that either. Um, okay. Hey, buddy. What are you up to? Begging. This is my thinking bench. I have to get a solid two to three hours of brooding in for a day. Fill in quotas. Have you by any chance seen a small stuffed capybara around? A capybara is... It's a large rodent native South America. I know. So, have you seen one? A stuffed one? Not a real one. That would be weird. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I could be a good cop or bad cop. I don't... With Robert, it's kind of scary, but... Be bad cop. Alright, Robert. We've been nice. Help us out, or I'm gonna... Or I'm gonna go off, learn how to fight, then come back and... Here and kick your ass. You. Learning how to fight? Please. Well, fine. If you don't tell us what we want to hear, I'm gonna spoil the season finale of Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Truckers. Huh? Ghost Truckers. You're bluffing. Hmm. My buddy here doesn't pit. play by the rules. Zero will do it. Camilla and Flint crash into a haunted stop. You're a monster. <laughs> Robert's eyes. I haven't seen any goddamn copy I haven't seen any goddamn copy bars, okay? Crap, I was really I was really knowing the bad cop bit too. I thought for sure we had something. Hey. Now what, bro? Joseph said his twins were around here somewhere, but I have no idea where we're supposed to find them. Wait, those creepy kids? Why didn't you tell me they had something to do with this? Huh? Maybe I should have left the good cop, bad cop routine to the prop to the pros on on TV. Dude. Yeah, Robert, bro, do you know where they were? <sighs> I do. A lot of people underestimate the sense of the man who broods. I saw them working around here a little while ago. Hey. Where'd they go? Right into the woods. I'd be careful, though. I don't trust them. But then again, I don't trust anyone. Mm. Not even you guys. Not even the ba that baby. Mm -hmm. I did the back. You're an old soul, kiddo. Oh. Thanks for the help, Robert. The woods. Go deeper into the woods. I stare into the depths of the of the forest. Who knows what could be in there? Mm -hmm. Are you prepared for what we might what we might face in here? No. Yes. <laughs> uh. It's the creepy twins. I never know what they are to expect. I'm ready, part I'm ready, partner, bro. Nope, but if he gets ever stop crying, I don't care. Let's do this. We start down the path into the woods, keeping our eyes and ears peeled. For any sign of Arnold, there's no squirrels or birds anywhere. The silence is unsettling. The sun can barely peek through the canopy. It's colder here. Suddenly, we hear voices. I want to do it. You got to do it last time. Craig and I come to the clearing where we find Christy and... Christian and Christy kneeling over something. Stop hey. right there and put your tiny hands where we can see them. Christian and Christy just stare at us. You heard the guy. Put your hands up. We're kind of in the middle of something here. Yeah, can you come back later? Hmm. What are you kids doing? Cutting stuff up. My heart's my heart is pounding. Is this is this the end of the line? I step closer. I can't believe what I'm seeing. A pair of safety scissors lie in the dirt, and it's Arnold. What have they done to him? Arnold! You're the baby. Hand over the can the capybara. No fair. Finders keepers. No, not finders keepers. That's our property and we've dis and we've and you've desecrated it. Well, how can you prove it's yours? Yeah, it doesn't have your name on it. Actually it does. See on the foot there? You should look to the foot. I can't read. Chris Craig looks at me. Oh. I'm so done with this, bro. There's no use arguing with them. River, sn River sniffles. Craig looks exhausted. Oh. I gotta get her home before she's gonna have another meltdown. Let's brunch sometime other time. Yeah? Very well, and I can't find a way to, you know, fix it. Uh, hi, this is Steven from Dad Mazon. I'm out, I'm out front with your delivery. Okay, I'll be right down. Wait, no, sorry. I 
need to put pants on first. I can't find my pants, but I'm wrapped from waist down in Devant, so you're cool with that? I can come back tomorrow. No, no, just... I'll be right down, just... I found some... <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Open the box and start pulling out the package. Package this. Man, these are so Okay, that's definitely not socks. It's butterflies? Okay, so yeah, I've done this one and it's Uh we're gonna go bring the box to Damien because it's Damien's butterflies. So I'm kinda like I'm going through this really quick because we've technically done this before and it's kinda creepy. Welcome. You've got dads. So we're going for the last of the dates now, so hopefully this will go pretty good. Uh it took some time for our schedules to line up, but I finally but I was finally able to find a weekend where Craig and I could go camping. He always stays stays so busy with work and kids, but it's good to know that we'll be able to spend some time relaxing together in nature. Since our first run, I've managed to go on regular runs with Craig. I mostly do them because it seems like it's the only time we get to hang out, but the added benefits is, is that I've seen a lot of the improvement in my health. I was, able to I was able to shift through the attic and find my old camping gear from college. Craig went me to a put me in charge of buying, uh, bringing the sleeping bags and the tent while well, he takes care of food, so I dribble to, to make sure everything is ready to go. Craig should be here any minute now. Amanda's going to be spending the weekend on a school trip to our national, to our natural capital, so she hasn't been away from home without me for longer than a day since our, she was 14. I hope she isn't feeling as nervous as I am about it. Hey Amanda, Amanda. Amanda's in the middle of setting on her top of her luggage in order to get it to finally zip. Hey Pops. Ready for your trip? Once I get this bad boy all zipped up, I'm good to go. How much did you pack? That seems like a lot for two days. Oh, it's all my ca it's all my camera equipment. Lenses, tripod, flash, all that. Are you even going to have time to take pictures? I'll find a way. I need to get some good shots of my s for my series on National Monuments. Oh, what's the series Aww. about? It's one of those internet series where I reimagine Disney princesses as founding fathers. What? <sighs> I'm kidding. Nobody likes those. I'm taking portraits for my friends. Oh well, I'm gonna be in the woods, out in the out there in nature, you know, roughing it just me and Mother Nature, the old Madre de trees. Are you gonna be all right on your own? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna have any signal out there, so I won't be able to text or call you at mm -hmm. all. Oh, that's right. I'll just be able to survive a couple of days without constant updates on who just got voted off of international haunted house house hunters. Well, I'll miss you. And for the record, Bailey was pushed down a flight of oriented stairs by a, by a ghost. They were really beautiful stairs. Amanda f finishes zipping up her big suitcase and lugs it to the next next to the door of the bedroom. She turns around and gives me a big yeah. big hug. Relax, relax, Dadatron. I'm a big kid now. I can take care of myself. Besides, I gotta share a room with with Monica Sanders, the two mom chaperones, and two mom chaperones. The most trouble I could possibly get into is falling asleep with a tub of ice cream on me. Oh well, all right. Don't steal anything, okay? Aww. Since you asked nicely, fine. Promise. I step outside, hauling my bags behind me. Craig's already s strapping some camping gear on top of the modest, the modest but stylish car. He notices me carrying my equipment and hurries over to take get it. Uh. Let's see, I could be. Uh. We're gonna play it on a little bit. I almost had a case of the vapors there. Oh. Never fear, these muscles were made for picking up heavy things and putting them in other places. Remember, this is your weekend to relax. Take it mm. easy. I guess I can't argue with that. Mm. Everything good with Amanda? Yep, on our way to her school, her school trip to Wisconsin. What about your offspring? Oh. Alright, it's Mashley's for the weekend. I'm ready to get my camp on. I rest my stuff in Craig's car and we get in. Oh no, what's wrong? I think it was my juice, my juicer plugged in. We gotta go back. 
Are you aware that someone's gonna break into your house and cold press some carrots? No, it's just... I... Just try to relax, man. Let the juicer float away, take all your worries, and blend the, and blend them into pulpy good vibe. Into pulpy good vibes. Great taste of deep breath. Do I have anything to listen to? Uh, all I had at my place was a series of DVDs that guide you through, through a thought and just calisthenic workout. Do you want to listen to those? Um, I'm just kidding. Craig hands me a thick case filled with CDs. Take your pick. I thumb through pages after pages of kids sing along CDs. Oh yeah, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Takes me back. Keep going. I get to the end of the case to find, in the very last slot, a blank CD with Craig's handwriting written on it. DJ Craig Stance Mix Mega Mix Volume 1. Made just for the trip. I think you'll like it. I pop the CD into the, into the car stereo and it's like I'm immediately transported to our old dorm day room. Hit after hit plays and soon enough we're both happily scream singing the lyrics to each song as we fly down the highway. This one was Carl's favorite. Carl, the third, the third roommate. He brought that, he brought that dog home one night, and I couldn't, and I couldn't pry you two apart. So we spent an entire semester fabricating a story about our foreign exchange student, who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. And then we had a room inspection. That RA was so suspicious of us, but couldn't never, but could never prove anything. And Carl was just under a blanket. Bless the pup's courage under fire. Man, we did some dumb things back in college. The hours fly fly by as we went as we belt our out tunes in whatever non-existent key our voices registered in. Soon enough, we're surrounded by lush trees and spectacular vistas of everything amazing that nature has to offer. It feels so good to be back there, be back here. Really good. We park our car at the entrance to a familiar trail and load up the gears on our backs. It's th I'm thankful that I've been working on my health for the past couple of weeks. Otherwise, I'd be dredging all the hiking that's about to happen. Craig looks intensified at, at his, intently at his phone. Everything all right? Yep. I had to fire off one last work at email. I box the phone as we start off. Th as we start off the trail, it's relatively easy, but I know I've I would have been ha huffing and puffing at this point. If it were all the murder, the murder sprints, I, murder sprints. I look around, around me and take it in, take in the tall trees and animals, animal trips. Are they camp back there? There's no reception out here. Oh yeah, being out in the middle of nowhere, we'll, we'll do that. I recognize the look of anxiety on Craig's face. But what if there's a problem? Uh, you trained for this? Reception is the least of your worries. You trained for Look, Craig, we all know that you really wanted to... If you really wanted, you could flex your calf muscles and fly out of here like a rocket ship. All the way back to Maple Bay. You're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. This is our weekend. We keep marching down the trail, but it seems like Craig's still worried. And after a bit, he stops in his tracks. Maybe we should go back. We can find another camp... We can find another campground that gets... Cell get a cell reception. Craig, seriously, what's wrong? I mean, I'm just really nervous. My dad instinct is kicking in, and my mind keeps conjuring up all sorts of worst-case scenarios. What if something happens to the girls? I don't have a signal. I would, I would have no way of knowing. Let me tell you, that feeling never goes away. No matter how old your kids are, you just gotta remind yourself that they're in good hands. Craig doesn't say anything. I give him a reassuring punch to the shoulder. I try to remember why we came out here. The plan was to get away from all, from it all and just focus on ourselves. For this little trip, no distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing out in the woods. Craig looks me directly in the eyes. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing out in the woods. We're gonna have some fun this weekend. Craig and I go back to marching. It's not long of a hike before we get to the camp. Before we get to the campsite, we're both glad to see that we're the only people there. Hmm. I can't believe you still have this tent. That on my attic. I've already checked it. I've already checked it for holes. It seems pretty... It's seen better days, but... I'm sure I think we'll be able to survive. I dump the bag of fabric poles onto the ground. We unfold the tent and... In the desired spot, I hand Craig the stakes. We, su we still know how to do this, right? Of course we do. We do not. After 20 minutes of struggling like people in bad form... In bad infomercials, we somehow managed to build an upright structure. That, closest, that closely resembles what a tent would look like if you asked somebody to draw a picture of one with tents with, with their eyes shut. 
I wouldn't put much against the, I wouldn't put this up against the storm, but I think we'll be able to survive for the night. We set out a couple of chairs and our cooking equipment, admiring our handiwork. Bro, look at us go. Look upon the kingdom we have built. Upon this rock we shall grill our meats and drink our brews, for we hold domi dominion over this land. Barely end up. Look at our look at our camping chairs, which we are probably going to sit on. So what's the next on the camps? Should have ducket. duck it. Let's see. Well, now that we have set, we have shelter settled, I think it's time for us to do some exploring. There's a waterfall. There's a waterfall a little bit up the way that I'm sure we could hike to. Let's get hiking. Craig and I venture into the woods. We amble along, taking our time to chat and admire the wildlife. Craig reaches out an arm and stops me. Dude, does that look like what I'm, what I think it looks like? I look over at where he's pointing. Oh my god, it does. It sure looks like a butt. I can't get over how detailed it is. I examine the butt, the butt tree further. The contour is perfect. It even has back dimples. I thought we were gonna have a great time camping, but this makes it even better. Craig holds back a snicker. I aspire to have a have every hike be as good as this one. I'm snickering now, too. Let's analyze this tree further. Craig and I share a huge belly laugh now at our awful jokes. The best thing about this is that there's no daughters here to tell us our jokes are bad. We high-five. Craig and I hit the tree again. And I hit the, tree, the trail again. It's been a long time since we, were out, since we were out here, but everything seems more or less familiar. We found out old landmarks that we remember back from college, from our college days. I think we're getting close now. Check it out. There's a clearing up ahead. As we get closer, I hear water running. Crossing over a hill, Craig and I are greeted by a wide clearing surrounded by trees. In front of us is a beautiful waterfall, spilling into a large body of water that's running into a river. Mouse agape with the genuine beauty of the place. We go to investigate. The old waterfall. Hey. It's gorgeous. Nature is so r is so rad. Peering further, we got an idea of how deep the pool is. Think we could jump off like off like the old days? Nah, the old dad is happy here just on dry land. Looks like you could, looks like you could jump you can climb through over here. We didn't bring some we didn't really bring some trunks. What are you talking about? Greg immediately begins taking his clothes off. I can't help but a sneak. That's a good butt. Craig turns around, suddenly he catches me looking. Oh. I do a lot of glute workouts. I immediately turn I immediately turn away blushing. Oh. You coming or what? Oh, uh, I don't know about this dude. He's already making his way over to the waterfall, but by the time I finish my sentence, when he realizes I'm not right behind him, he turns around and rolls his eyes. <laughs> we lived together for years and I've seen your ass more times than I can count. It's not a it's not a big deal. If the clothes are coming off, then I'll, then it's someone's birthday. Craig gives me a wolf whistle. I turn to give him a, give up my booty a good, a good uh, I turn to give my booty a big good spank. That's one, that's one for you, big boy. I take my shirt off and drop it in a, pile, drop it in a pile with Craig's clothes. I put the rest of my clothes on the ground, feeling exposed. Craig and I climb to the top of the waterfall, making sure not to slip in any, slip on any wet rocks. He reaches the peak before I do. And offers me a hand getting up. At the top, we look over the cliff and, and into the tiny lake. It seems so much higher up from this perspective. Craig has been a real daredevil. He pulled some stunts in college that I'm honestly still shocked he survived. I was always the one standing on the sidelines, watching and hoping I wouldn't be bring wouldn't be bringing him home in a gurney. Man, this could be dangerous. Craig looks me in the eyes. Don't think. Just jump. Craig cannibals off the waterfall into the lake, creating a huge splash. I'm worried for a moment before he rela he finally resurfaces from under the water. <laughs> Whoa. He treads water and looks up at me. Mm -hmm. You coming or what? Don't think. Just jump. How are you supposed to not just not think? I'm pretty sure that's not physically possible. My toes grip the edge of the rock. The water looks so far away. Don't think. Just I run off the edge, trying to do my best cannibal. Somewhere in the middle, it turns into a really graceful belly flop. 
Hit the water with a loud thap. slap. That would hurt. I resurfaced to find Craig giggling. Oh. I rate that belly flop a, a solid 8 out of 10. Your form was lacking, but your heart was in the right place. I, play, I playfully splash water at Craig. Oh. Are you sure about that? I splash him again. Oh. You've given me no choice. Craig splashed me in the face with a huge wave of water. You've awakened the beast. He launches another wave of water at me. Don't, put, don't you put me in the corner here. Don't put a wild animal in the corner. Uh, let's see. Squirt water at him. Uh, screw I lost my hands together in the water and squirt a stream of water directly in the A weak defense. Your water squirting is no match for the massive wave of water my friend, my friendly toned biceps are about to send in your direction. Craig, please. I have a child. My please fall on deaf ears. He launches a volley of water into my direction and in the moment I am defeated. Craig, truce, please. Craig thinks about it. Mm. Yeah, sure. We shake hands. There is peace. And the jump was, was, was such an adrenaline rush. Not so scary now, huh? We run all we run all the way up the slick rocks and cannonball off the waterfall again. What a rush. Good form on that one. Wanna go again? With the same energy we had in our youth, we climb back up the to the top of the waterfall. I'm brave enough to try a flip, which I'm sure it looks incredibly graceful as I belly flop into the waterfall. Into the water. Phew, man. This is fun. Go one more time? Got one more in you? It takes us a little more time, but we get the water. This running. Alright, I think that's my limit. We should get going back to it before it gets too dark. Oh. We should probably head back. Put our clothes back on and notice that they're so that they're soaking wet. Maybe a splash fight wasn't the best idea. That's no, okay. We'll just get a fire going in no time. We can dry off and get some and get some dinner going. Sopping wet, we hike back to the campsite and unpack everything we need for dinner. Craig pulls out a couple steaks and some chopped potatoes and tin foil. Mm. You ready for a feast? Hey man, take a seat. The Craig trains is pulling into a relaxation station, and I'm your conductor. Let me cook for you. Absolutely not. Cooking is the thing that relaxes me the most. I'll take it up from here. Craig cooks now. I remember him. I remember how his entire sophomore year diet consisted of microwavable mac and cheese. Not, not, but not wake, uh, microwaved, and have trouble believing the thing he just said. At least let me stir the fire. Mm. Start the fire. Sure. Let me just grab my matches. Craig just into his backpack. He rummages around in his bag, pulling out things and checking every pocket. Uh-oh. Oh. I know I packed it. Craig checks his other bag and still can't find it. My stomach grumbles and now I'm more... And I'm actually aware of how cold and wet I am, but we really need to get the fire started. Okay, well, let's... It's not the end of the world. Oh. Gosh, I'm so stupid. I could have sworn I packed it. I'm so sorry, dude. Don't be. We can figure this out. We can start a fire. We're smart guys. I mean, how hard can it be? I've watched plenty of survival programs on TV. If a naked reality TV star can do this, so can we. We'll need some wood. Adjust it to the trees around us. Oh. There's no shorter to that. And some tinder. Oh. We can make that work. And then I think some ancient aliens are then supposed to come by and give us advanced technology. Or renovate our house. Depends on the show. Craig and I gather a variety of wood, bark, and moss until... We have all the materials that could uh, possibly make a passable looking, a passable looking oh. campfire. Just set fire, right? That's the fun part. The sun is just just now setting a cool, set, it's just now setting, and a cool breeze rustles the leaves of the tree around us. We have to work quick. Hmm. I've done this, before, I've done this in the past, and I know I can figure it out. Just give me a second. Any way I can help? Uh. Give me some moral support. Lift my spirits, and we'll make the fire. We'll make this fire happen. Go overboard with compliments. You're really giving me that fire of the business. You're an amazing, hardworking father with a start with a steady work ethic and everybody loves you. 
Your daughters think you're a superhero and the neighbor's dads respect you immensely. Also, your butt looks great. <laughs> Bro, stop. He'll make me cry. Okay, okay. Don't hear your tears putting out the fire. Eventually, Craig is miraculously able to get something going. He blows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss into the base of the pit. Soon enough, we have a nice lit little fire going. Way to go, man. We're regular old outdoorsy fellas. Hurry for not dying. We take a seat in I take a seat in one of the lawn chairs. Craig brought a cozy chairs Craig bought and cozies up to the fire, warming up my hands. Oh. Relax, man. Take it easy. Let me handle the dinner. I watch as Craig strokes his strokes his fire. We set and sets up a makeshift grill for the steaks. After all the hiking and swimming and fire starting, I'm able to relax a bit with the sound of his crickets and the scent of steak filling the air. I actually feel pretty calm. Craig expertly stir sears into sears two steaks in a pan he's been heating up for the, on the fire cracking thyme and crushed ginger over it while basting them both in butter wow i didn't know he had, he was actually good at cooking the fanciest thing I, the fanciest i ever saw him get in college was when he started sprinkling the seasoning packets onto his dry ramen and eating it straight up when did this happen you used to eat cereal every morning with beer instead of milk mm -hmm. i grew up i guess I think those are just. I think these are just about ready. Craig puts the steak on a paper plate and sets them aside. I start to reach for one, but Craig smacks my hand away. Oh. Dude, let them rest. They'll be more flavorful that way. I patiently return to my seat, eyeing the steaks for the steaks longingly from a distance. They smell incredible. Craig prepares a side salad for us in the meantime, sprinkling feta cheese onto freshly chopped greens. He plants it next to. A he plates it next to a ginger pile of roasted potatoes covered in olive oil and rosemary. Once it's all ready, he sit we sit down by the fire and dig in. Mm -hmm. Does it taste okay? Mm -hmm. I'm in heaven. That's what I like to hear. Remember how for an entire semester we would eat burritos for breakfast, lunch, mm -hmm. and dinner? It's so hard not to go back to that. Look at you now, man. You have kids, a great job, and you cook like a, like a vengeful wizard whose arch nemesis is microwavable food. I'm really impressed with how much you've gotten into your life together. <laughs> Craig laughs, but there's no humor in it. Oh. I'm glad you think that. I glance at Craig while he picks up a salad. He really grew out of his, out of the baby face, but there's something about his expression that makes him seem so much older than he is. A sense of, a sense of maturity he didn't have in college. He looks exhausted. You okay? I don't know. Yeah. Come on, dude. I've known you for long enough to see when you're down. Oh, man. I'm tired, bro. I think I've been out of out here making is making me realize just how drained I feel. You worked really you work really hard, Greg. It can't be easy. I don't know. I have to I have to for my girls. I volunteer at their school, I cook healthy meals for them, I do everything I can to make sure they're safe and happy. And when they're with their mom, I'm always working overtime so I can support them. And then you work on a lot in then you work out a lot so you can crush anyone who stands in your way. Oh. That, and I don't want to fall into my old habits. I need to set a good example for my girls. Everything I do is for them, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But it seems like you're bleeding yourself, bleeding, it's bleeding you dry. Mm -hmm. Is that what it takes to raise them well? Then it's worth it. Craig, buddy, I know where you're coming from, but you gotta take care of yourself too. Nice. I do, though. I eat right and exercise and... That's not what I mean. You're a little too butter on. You're too little butter on too much toast, you know? Hey! What? You're spreading yourself too thin. Life needs balance. It's great that you care that this much about your kids, but you can't neglect your own needs because you're too busy taking care of everyone else's. You matter too. I... It's just. I know I can prove my. I know I can provide for my family, and if I take a step back and look at everything objectively, I know I'm doing right by them. I don't know. But I can't explain it, man. There's always that voice in the back of my head telling me that I need to do some. Do, I need to do more. It's like it's never enough for me. Every time I try to relax, the voice keeps telling me I don't deserve it. To be honest, I even feel guilty about being out here. Craig, you're trying your best, and you're doing an amazing job. There's a fact. That's a fact. But even if you weren't, you would still deserve happiness. Oh. Do I, though? Let's see, there's... <laughs> I think I'm just gonna go with the... Yeah, we're doing the bro one because it's like... I'm kind of thinking about it. It's like we've been doing the bro thing the whole time. 
But look at Craig and think about what a good friend and even better father he is. He's compassionate, he's hardworking, he's relentlessly positive. He encourages everyone to be be the best of his, the best version of themselves. He makes me want to be a better person. If you could only see yourself the way I see you. Craig beams. He gets up and walks over to his supplies. Come on, I brought dessert. Oh, are you going to use the campfire to torch the tops of some creme brulee? Mm -hmm. What? I know a little to nothing about cooking. Craig pulls out nice. marshmallows. Well, you still know how to make s'mores, right? I think this. The, I think the more important question is, do you know how to make s'mores? As I recall, it used to just completely blacken the marshmallows. Mm -hmm. Oh, I stand by that. It's charred on the outside, but gooey center is preserved. Brutish. Craig throws a, throws a marshmallow at me and I catch up my mouth. Oh. Pro move. We used to be able to do that in the great at great distances against a wind disadvantage. Give me a give me a week of practice and I'll be com I'll be competitive again. Craig and I sit in the warm glow of the campfire, watching embers float up towards the sky. The stars are so much brighter out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd miss this. Zero. Me too. We stay here until it gets late, half remembering stories from college. We watch as the fire dies and eventually climb her to the tent. We crawl into the tent and I unfurl my sleeping bag. Wait, where's the sleeping bag? I look around for a second. Oh, oh no, I must have left it at the house. It's all yours, dude. I'm sorry, I'll just curl up over here. Mm -hmm. No, wait, here. Craig gives us the sleeping bag and spreads it out so there's pl enough room for both of us to lay on top of it. Mm -hmm. Night, bro. Good night, bro. I roll over and we face. I roll over and we face away from each other without a blanket. It's really cold. I shiver everyone without realizing I find myself nestled, up, nestling closer to Craig. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. He turns over and I can feel his breath on my neck. It's hard to focus on everything else. I turn over, trying to get more comfortable. I open my eyes to find Craig's face only a few inches from mine. For once, he looks. He looks at peace. His eyes flutter. Op his eyes flutter open. His hands find place on my on my waist. I'm not sure who leaned in first, but suddenly we're kissing. We look at each other again, my heart racing. Craig? Oh, man. I got strong feelings for you, bro. Feelings I can't deny anymore. Bro, me too. I run my hand through his hair, bend down into his chest. Craig brings me closer, wrapping my arms around wrapping his arms around me. I feel so secure. You know, talking about old times is fun, but I like making new memories with you. I smile, tracing the lines of his hip with my finger. We kiss again. I'm not worried about us getting too cold tonight. Wow, that was an amazing date. I actually wonder if you can actually can get that maxed out, or if, if it's just like random numbers they decide to throw at you. Don't trust egg sa gas station egg sandwiches. <laughs> Unless you like know the place personally, well... You, I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be home. Should be, okay, so I'm gonna skip through this because it is... Because we've, it's like the same at the every single ending. Yeah. Hey. So we're kind of doing this. You told me not to make a big deal about it, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So the reason I skipped that last part, uh, it was because it, we've seen it so many times. So I'm just kind of like fast forwarding through boring parts we've seen a couple of times already. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise that everyone's here. Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure, it's fully customized. Yeah, so I'm gonna kind of just skip through this a bit. Good next time. Amanda leans in close to Burn Hazel, lowering her voice. Listen, you guys can be real with me. If you're 
downplaying your physical abilities? I want to know what... That you can trust me. Heck, even think of me as your third as a third twin. Man, that's, that's a triplet. You know, Dad, by the time I'm done with these kids, we're going to be fishing... We're going to be finish each other's... What? You didn't finish your sentence. What are we going to finish? Each other's... Yeah. Sentences. See? Third twin. I have to go. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on the back porch. The back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits next, down next to me. Kill the party, pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So I, uh, also something for you. For me? Uh, so it's the photo... So I'm kind of going through this a bit. Because it's the photo that she that we that she gave us. Aww. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. I glance over at the back of the yard where Craig is sitting on a bench, beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smells at me. I'll leave you to it, Dad. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emma's are gonna go get ice cream. Leave pups. Amanda, draws, Amanda runs off to join her friends. I take a seat next to Craig as the last guest makes their way out of the party. Aww. Bro, bro. Uh -huh. This reminds me of the parties we used to throw. Fewer cake scents, of course. Probably the for the best. I don't want to get my hips replaced after breaking after a, a party trick goes wrong. We can take cakes from. We can leave cake stands in the past. Oh. Oh. I'm uh, taking this weekend to relax. This party was my first stop. Stop off out of the express train for the relaxation for the relaxation station. Next stop is Napsville. Pull into zone. Pull into the into the zero con concourse. I like to book a ticket to Napsville as well. Mm. I only have to meet you halfway, eating food directly on off of your own stomach. Town. <laughs> we both giggle, up, but man, I do want to just pour some chips on my belly while I hang out in a hammock. Craig, I'm glad you're making time for yourself. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm. This is a funny thing, dude. I didn't realize how overworked I was until we got away from the city. It, it's honest. It's honestly just as destructive as binge drinking every night and drinking bur and eating burritos off the floor. I guess we need to get out of the city more often than Craig kicks his legs over the side of the bench and leans onto me, laying down on my lap, or my fingers through his hair. You're looking for balance. I admire that. I'm trying not to feel guilty about doing things for myself. It's a process. It's just going to take some time to figure out, figure it out. I might need your help, bro. Craig, I'll be your bro until the day I die. And if being your bro means forcing you to take care of yourself, then I'd happy, then I'll happily oblige. Oh. Craig, looks up, Craig looks up at me smiling. Oh. Bro, nice. that means so much to me. Craig sits up and pulls me into a kiss. Bro, <laughs> we both laugh. Mm -hmm. You and me, we're gonna be we're gonna be all right. So that was all of the uh, Craig dates. Um, I was gonna try to sit there and like do the S rank for the second date because I got a C on that, but apparently it's a lot harder to get that than I thought it was because it didn't let me go back like it used to. And we now have Craig's photo added to the added to the group. So that has made four of the dads. We still have three of them left. We've done Joseph's, Matt, uh, Hugo's, Craig's, and Damien. So that leaves. Matt, Brian, and uh, Robert. So we've got, as I can so there's that one. Damien's Joseph and Greg. I hope you guys actually enjoyed. Please leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I hope you guys enjoyed. In the next video, I will decide I'm going to actually post up on Twitter if you guys want me to do who do you want me to do next? But 
Till then, I'm Sangod, aka Zero, saying stay frosty, and I will see you all in my next video. Good, and <laughs> bye.